their constitutional rights? You bet. Is that the basis of the militia movement? Uh, that, no, that, that is not the basis of the militia movement, but that is a concern right now. Would you one elaborate the, on that? Sure. One of the things that was mentioned that was mentioned here earlier, I think Senator Spector mentioned it. He said, were the militias a threat to the federal government? And I says, gee, you walk outside of 495 and the question's the other way around. Are, is the government a threat to the militia? The militia is everybody. It's just a law in which people form themselves a group for self-defense and for their security. Okay? It's not to wage war, but if a war is waged, these groups plan on winning. And let me tell you something else. It's, speaking of this, you're saying, should this be looked into? It's a mindset. I was at a um, gun range earlier this year, and they happened to be firing machine guns that they owned lawfully. And we have people, I'm talking law enforcement, I'm talking military, we have a lot of sympathetic people in those branches who all were down there with their firearms and with the awesome display of firepower that I saw down there, and that was just one iota of it, okay? I say this sincerely, I don't mean to direct this at anybody here, but a lot of people see what's coming down. They, they see some of the executive orders that are being thrown at them, some of the statements that are being made directed toward the American public. What form, what form do you think is most likely for this uh, warfare to be, to be launched against the people? In, in what form? Yeah, and, and I mean, uh, you, you mentioned instances, obviously, mm -hmm. where, where that you're very much concerned about the Waco no, this incident is, and, and things of that nature, but do you see something uh, on a more organized basis or a more pervasive basis yeah. in terms of what the government might do to, to, to the citizens? Right, it isn't just uh, about Waco and uh, Ruby Ridge. When you hear things about, there was a survey out in uh, 29 Palms, California, in which military officers were asked, if necessary, would they shoot on Americans who refuse to give up their firearms? In any other country, that constitutes a serious threat. Military is not to be used with law enforcement. And there are certain un inalienable rights people just aren't going to give up. This is the problem we face here. Even if you say, hey, this is a real bad idea. These guys are a bad idea, and we ought to go just stomp their heads in. you got a problem because they're going to shoot back. And I, I can tell when those other officers were up here, it was a serious concern. Even though, hey, we all want to preserve our constitutional rights, okay? Y if there's nuts out there, heck, we'll probably find them before you do and turn them over to you. But as far as the mainstream approach of this thing, and when we hear about some of the plans or ideas that they would like to see happen to us, okay? Now, I have seen them take place. Um, I am, for instance, I'm talking about Brunswick, Ohio. We had one gentleman who not got his door knocked on. He said, no, go back and get a warrant. It's under the Constitution. Get a warrant, get a probable cause. Okay, the result was he kicked his door in seven times. So this guy, this, off, this person with a legally owned weapon shot him. She said it was a police officer. If a police officer kicks down my door with no warrant, no probable cause, what am I supposed to do? Incidents like that mm -hmm. have happened throughout the course of history will continue to happen. The, the result... My, okay. my, my, my oh, yeah. question is, yeah. it, do, do you perceive and are you concerned about a more organized, more pervasive effort by the government against individuals or groups or, or whoever in what form it might take? Could I ask Mr. Adams that question or maybe some of the yeah, other... Yeah, I would like to respond to a few of these things. Uh, I don't know that I necessarily perceive that the government is planning some conspiracy, if you will, to, uh, to attack the militias. I do have a question and would like a response. I know you may not be able to respond, respond to me today. Uh, this goes back to, to March 25th of this year, and I know that some of you senators are aware uh, of the, at least of the allegations, and that's what I'd like to know, if they were allegations or if they were true, because this is the answer to your question. Uh, there was a, a proposed or an alle allegation that uh, the Attorney General Janet Reno was going to attack several militia leaders in this in this country on March 25th. Uh, there were several senators that wrote to uh, the Attorney General concerning this uh, and asked her not to do this. Uh, my question is, I don't know if it was going to take place or not. If it was going to going take... Going to do what, Mr. Adams? To attack several militia attack, leaders. Attack? You mean arrest? Attack. Attack was, was the attack. word. Attack. Attack, yes. And uh, I'm not saying that this was going to take place. I'm saying that I've, I've seen the letters that the senators have written to her. I've seen copies of them. They've been on television. Uh, do you have those copies with you? I do not, know. Would you provide them to us? I, I will provide where you can get them. I do not personally have them, but I will do that. 
we have, uh, we they, have, they do we have, have them. Those and we will do you have them with you? No, 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 sir, we don't. Uh, so the question is, I don't know if that was real or whether it was rumor or what, but I, I will say that it was a, a tremendous concern to a lot of people across the country that if, they were going to be attacked. That they were going to be attacked, right. Now, I personally could not believe that it could, that it could be possible in this country because we were violating no laws. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we operate within the law, uh, and, we, and we believe in that. So if we were going to be attacked, it was certainly very, something very, very uh, ominous to take place from our government. But it, it was widespread enough that some Congress representatives did uh, inquire of Ms. Reno about this. And I, she did not respond. She did not respond. We would like a response. If it was real, then, of course, we would really like to know why such a thing was taking place. Uh, if it wasn't real, then just respond to it, and, and that's the answer. And that's one of the problems, I think, that we have today, is there's a lot of questions with few answers. And I think if we could expose something, you've heard a lot of allegations from people here today. Maybe they're real, maybe they're not. If they're real, then let's expose them. If they're not, then let's expose them. Well, and that's why I think this is a healthy... Uh, form that we have here today because we have started some communication. Well, Mr. Adams, I know of no such proposal by the Attorney General to attack uh, anyone. Uh, it sounds uh, uh, far-fetched to me. And, if you have letters from senators, I'd like to see them. Yeah. Well, and, and, I, and I do agree with you that it, it sounds far-fetched, but the letters do exist. Well, let's see them. Let us turn out to you with Senator Feinstein. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, th this is my uh, uh, first occasion to be able to talk with um, militia members. So I'm, I'm a newcomer, and I listen very carefully to what has been said here today. And uh, what, what I gather from it is that, as you put it, Mr. Johnson, people are, are ticked off, uh, irritated, um, annoyed, upset, whatever you may say. Uh, about a variety of things having to do with, quote, government, whether it's law enforcement or decision makers or anything else. What I'd like to have each one of you answered, answer is, assuming this is correct, do you believe there are circumstances in which you can take the law into your own hands? Mr. Tokman, let's go down. I'm sorry, it's Truckman. Excuse me, Mr. Truckman. Like a vehicle. Uh, no, ma'am, I don't. Nobody should be an island to, unto himself, nor a law unto himself. So you believe there are no circumstances where individuals should take the law into their own hands? There is one. What, when someone that? comes to destroy my family, I won't have a choice. If that were ever to happen, I would defend to the last drop of blood. Okay. And I would expect any other American to do the same thing. And I'm told that you have a concealed weapons permit, so I guess you probably feel the same way we do. Well, let me put that aside. I do not have a concealed weapon permit. Well, you recently had one. No, I had one in the 1970s. I have not had one since then, after a terrorist incident that took place involving myself. That I'll was the only time I had a concealed weapon permit, so I'm happy to set that one straight. Well, I apologize. Now, I'll have to go back to my California informers. I think you will. Let me, um, uh, let me move on. Um, uh, Mr. Fletcher, do you believe there are any circumstances under which uh, you can take, you or your followers can take the law into their own hands? Uh, commonly, absolutely not. And we do not at any time espouse that in any way, shape, or form. However, and we are, and again, it's totally, uh, as in the militia of Montana, we're predominantly educational in nature, and by that I mean we're, that's what we do mostly. You will not find us out in our camos and that type of thing very regularly at all. Uh, no, normally, and, and at no time have we ever espoused any such uh, action. You know, we, we are, however, a defensive uh, kind of a concept, if you will, and uh, I suppose there, there could it so, be some bizarre situation like the uh, uh, unconstitutional, unconstitutional suspension of the Constitution that might therefore uh, appear that people are going to take things Okay. Uh, yes. Mr. Adams? There is no time uh, for any uh, people to go against the laws of their government and to take those laws into their own hands. Uh, that is totally unacceptable in any society. And we certainly and, and fully agree with that. Uh, one of the questions 
that was brought up about this this particular meeting here today was, uh, you know, how many people are involved with the militia? And I think some earlier testimony that was kind of hard to put a finger on. Uh, I can personally tell you that that uh, from from my office alone, we have helped establish over 1,000 lawful militia units throughout the country in all 50 states. And I know that all of these people that I've talked to and, and that I talk to throughout the nation agree with the statements I'm making right now, that we must be law-abiding. Uh, the only exception to that, which I believe has already been stated, is for self-preservation and self-defense uh, of, of, our, of our persons and family uh, if an unlawful act were being perpetrated against us. All right, Mr. Johnson. Hmm. I'd say there only be two occasions. First one is if, once again, if you come into somebody's house, shoot. Without a warrant and yeah. without reasonable cause. Is yeah, without a it? warrant, without a reasonable cause. And it would be awfully nice if they came in the house with the warrant. It would be nice if they would knock politely. But other than that, I don't see a reason for using any kind of force to justify your actions. And of course, once again, you suspend the Constitution. Then I'm, I don't, for that reason, I don't have to wreck anybody, recognize anybody in federal law enforcement if we're invaded for some reason and our, gov our government's overthrown by a foreign power. We're going to have to take law into our own hands to save okay. it. Mr. Olson? I would agree completely, completely with what J.J. Uh, Johnson has said, that uh, there is no other reason to take law into one's own hands unless it's for the preservation of himself uh, or, or the property, his family. Uh, what we have done, and this is how I deal with the law, and I recognize the law and submit to the law, we have been empowered and encourage our sheriffs. We provide the evidence. This, this book that I would like to, to present to, the, to this Senate subcommittee is about six pages, six pounds of evidence that will conclusively show this committee the corruption in government. And I would like the committee to have this book. It, now you who represent this government, you who have formed this Senate body, and you who are concerned about the laws, now this is the way that I deal with it. Here's the evidence. You carry out your responsibility for the law. Okay, may I, may I go on and ask another question? Yes, and you let may. Me... To take whatever time you need, Senator Klein. Oh, Sorry. thank you very Turn much. Um, Mr. Olson, you're wearing a uniform, and that uniform says you are a commander. What is it that, it co that you command? Ours is an organization of command communication. Uh, serving in the military, we, are we are understand what is called command control communication because there is a control that must be exercised in the organized military. We in the militia have command communication in that we convey information down to the lowest level so that reasonable, intelligent human beings can make an informed decision. Do you command people? No, no, I, I am a commander only in what is called an, a unity of command so that a person reports to another person all the way up and down the chain. Let's call it a simple uh, line of communication or echelon of communication. There is and, no command And what do now. these people communicate about? Communicate information, information. The information now available to the American public is, is extraordinary, is extraordinary in that we are av available now through alternative sources of news to convey truth to the American people. I believe that what you're seeing in America in the last three or four years is a phenomena of informed Americans now waking up. A new conscience is building in America. I don't mean to stop you, but I, I, I've got so many questions yes. I want to ask you about I'll, I'll try what it is, what it, what me, it, just preacher, practically I'm what it is you do. Do the people in your organization stockpile weapons? I wouldn't say stockpiling. No one should have more than they should need. Uh, How many weapons does an individual need? It depends upon the threat that they perceive. So is it fair to say that there could be unlimited numbers of weapons? Possibly. The old adage in the military is that accuracy is everything. And, and what do you do with these weapons? prepare ourselves to defend ourselves, ma'am. We are not offensive. We are defensive, purely defensive. So you, everybody is trained in how to use these weapons? No, ma'am. In, in the community that we call the militia, there are, there are two parts of the militia, that which we call the patriot body, those people that are more concerned about information, seminars, videotapes, information. And then there is the militia who may be involved in the weekend maneuvers. That 
is what you see in the press often what you don't see in this vast grouping of americans concerned about the constitution are the religious right for example they're very much concerned the patriot community the information community they're very much concerned but what you do see is that small portion of people called the militia who exercise on the weekends and under, under what circumstances would this command operation that you have uh, sanction the use of these weapons excellent question ma'am we will defer to the lawful historic authority which is the county sheriff he indeed is the commander of the local militia and when a situation erupts in which we would be deputized does he participate with you no he, he cannot because of course of his political nature he cannot always but he is normally in support of knowing the historic role of our sheriffs in the event that the county were to be endangered he could deputize a ready posse and he could form the militia to defend the people that's what the historic <laughs> militia is all about and what would what would this county be afraid of the county could be afraid of for example there are 53 federal agencies right now that employ deadly force <coughs> they carry weapons and they can make arrests using deadly force if they but supposing they had warrants that may not necessarily be what the county would be with best interest of the people in the county for example our county sheriff does not know when federal officials come into the county to search seize or arrest until he sees it on the nightly news we have a bill before uh, our house or we're trying to seek support for it perhaps you've heard of it the no more wacos bill or the sheriff empowerment legislation which would require federal agencies to get permission from the local county sheriffs before they could come into the county in other words coordinate their activities with the county sheriff there are of course some exceptions to that to that rule which uh, would involve necessarily the in investigation of uh, the sheriff himself for example i believe my time is up mr chairman i'll wait for the next round uh, Senator Feinstein, I don't think we're going to have another round because the vote starts could, in a few minutes. If you want to could I ask one other question? Yes. Do you believe there are any circumstances in which an individual has a right to blow up a building? And let's start with you, Mr. Truckman. Absolutely not, Mrs. Feinstein. Absolutely not. We are plain and simple, a neighborhood watch, watching out for problems. When we encounter what we perceive as threats to a peaceful society, we do something about it. Well, we let me alert ask you this. If you're officials. plain and simple, why do I read constantly That's these the violent quotes, this hatred for other people, this anti-Semitic, anti-black, well, anti, I mean, driving people to have this intense uh, fear and antagonism? Would you like, would you like my black friend to answer that for you? I'm no, sick and no, tired no, 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 no. I'm sick I and tired you. of these questions constantly. I asked you why. We have gone over it and over it and over it. And if you want to blame somebody about it, take a look at the press. We're, we're telling them one thing. They're telling you something else. I already addressed So it. you're saying you don't say these no, things? No, ma'am, I do not say that. Okay. We're all in this That's together. That's all I wanted to know. You, so well, all those well, comments are wrong. I'm sorry, Mrs. Feinstein. What, what we're saying is we are all in this together. America better port away its differences or we'll cease to have a country. We shouldn't be your side and my side. We should all be for the same, the betterment of our country and our, for our fellow countrymen. That's all okay. I'm saying. Mr. Fletcher? Well, it's pretty the much circumstances the, same, on which the same answer. No, absolutely right. not. And, I, and that, I don't mean that your question's ludicrous, but that it is a little bit, and I, I don't mean that as an insult. I don't think anybody could perceive that, that point in time where that would make sense, particularly if we're talking uh, uh, the, the housing of infants and that type of thing. And the press, which Mr. Trockman refers to, shows Mr. Trockman's face and one of the other Patriot leaders' face and the blown up babies and then just leaves it hang there. And that's, unfortunately, we can't sue for that. And if we could, it would look like the national debt in terms of a legal action. And as far as the racial thing is concerned, um, that's garbage. Those folks in the extreme radical fringes of the Patriot Movement, which is a cross-section of Americana, same as the police forces, 10% of every police force is either raci racially motivated, racist persons, they're doing drugs, doing prostitution, or stealing on the side, and it's probably the same in the militia movement because it's a cross-section of Americana. We stand down from any hate kind of rhetoric whatsoever, period. And my wife of 25 years was Jewish and Italian. My uh, business partners for four or five different years were blacks. 
and my granddaughter is half American Indian. So if I'm racist, I am doing a lousy job of it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Adams? We certainly in no way would ever condone, as I said earlier, any type of violence, and of course that would include a bombing. Uh, I, I would ask each of you that as you watch the media report upon us, uh, and you've probably seen many of our faces many times, listen for those words of racism from our mouth. You have not heard it. You will not hear it. And if we hear of anyone in our organization speaking of hate <coughs> or speaking of racism, they will be asked to leave and never return because we do not condone it. The press will go out and find some fringe element out there that may say something, but trust me and believe me, it is not part of our mainstream organization. And as I said earlier, there are going to be some people that will try to ride our coattails because we are before the press. <laughs> My gosh. Uh, we're before you today, and that's a lot of that's a lot of public knowledge, and they're going to try to grab some of that, and we will try to eliminate it wherever we can. But you pay very close attention to what the media has to say, and certainly as politicians, you've been soundbited. You know exactly what we're talking about. But you watch what we say out of our own mouth, and that's what's true. Mr. Johnson. Yeah. The. Um First, it's a question about uh, blowing up a building. Are there any circumstances under which an individual is justified to blow up any building? After you've evacuated it and you wanted to cover up the evidence. <laughs> Other than that, let me talk about the racist aspect now. <clears throat> the, it's getting old. I'm getting real tired of being called a Klan member. <laughs> I'm getting tired of being called a member of the Aryan Nations group. I spoke two weeks ago down at the Lincoln Memorial along with two other black people and the Jews for the preservation of firearms, and I believe there was somebody else Jewish who had helped organize it, and the reports came out that a racist, anti-Semitic militia group held a rally on the Lincoln Memorial. Are these people blind or is there an agenda afoot here? Okay? There are more black people showing up every day. A lot of the things that these people sit around in these meetings, these so-called right-wing wackos and talk about, happen daily in black communities, and black communities know this. The first people concerned seriously about neighborhood house-to-house -house searches and seizures were over in Chicago. They were black. Good grief, almost half the people in Waco who got killed were black. This movement isn't about guns and skin color. It's about liberty. It's about freedom. Amen. The, same kind of, the same kind of legislation we're seeing coming down on everybody now came down on blacks just after the Civil War. That's why they're getting involved in this thing. And it's going to come eventually to somebody of... You know, as you keep ignoring us and saying, well, these guys are just a bunch of angry white men. Well, pardon me, pardon me for interrupting, yeah, yeah. but they have started the vote now, so oh, we're going right. to have to conclude in just yeah. a few minutes. Okay. Could, if I could, Mr. Olson, would you respond to that? The answer is absolutely not. Absolutely not. Our record stands for itself. The FBI will give you all the evidence concerning the Michigan Militia Corps on that question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, well, the vote has started, so we're going to have to conclude uh, very shortly. Uh, there have been uh, uh, a lot of very serious charges made, uh, and we would like uh, a specification to the extent that you gentlemen would like to, uh, to make them. Uh, I would ask you, Mr. Fletcher, when you talk about uh, other explosions in the federal building and another John Doe, to give us the specifics. You've given us some materials. We will, we will take a look at them. Uh, uh, Mr. Olson, you have uh, uh, made a charge that uh, uh, what Senator Cole pointed up about uh, a picture of Adolf Hitler, all in favor of gun control, raise your right hand, being Jewish copyrighted. That is, that is from the Jews for the Preservation of Fire gun, or, gun Ownership out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and that is a copyrighted document. And what's your authority that it's Jewish? A letter that was uh, came out in JF. Uh, JPFO's uh, newsletter about a month ago, and I'll be glad to from, give you a from copy. From whom? From you, the director. The director would, well, would of you please, would JPFO. You pl would you please submit a copy? We, we want to have take, it. We want we'll to have it on your desk it. within the week, sir. Uh, <clears throat> I'd be glad to get into the issue you raised about the uh, single bullet theory. If you want to write to me, I will respond to you in detail. I'm sorry we don't have the time with the vote starting. Uh, Mr. Mr. Adams, you, you have made a comment. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, about the organization of militias in all uh, 50 states. And I would ask this of you and of all the other members present, if you would provide uh, this committee uh, in writing uh, all the information you have 
uh, about uh, uh, where the militias are, uh, how many there are in each state, uh, where their names are, what their names are, uh, what their membership is, what their purposes are, if there is anything in writing about them, if there is a, uh, to give us uh, some specification to the extent you can as to what, uh, what weapons they have. And I'm not making any suggestion if there are any violations of law, uh, but we'd like to know as much uh, specifically as we can uh, about, this, uh, about this question. Uh, this hearing, uh, uh, I think, has been uh, illuminating. Perhaps you'll allow Ken Adams to give you a response to that question if he will provide you with that in-depth information. I certainly would uh, be appreciative if uh, Mr. Ken Adams would, uh, would, would, uh, would, would do that. Uh, my own view, as I suggested in a brief exchange with uh, Mr. Olson, is that uh, let it all come out. Let yeah. it all hang out. Let's could I, see could exactly I respond to your question, sir? For your, to your request to be if brief. You can, if you can, briefly, we're, be very we're brief. going to start. Uh, you, you have asked for uh, lists of people and lists of memberships and things of this information. I cannot provide that. No, I haven't you. asked for a list of membership well, that, or lists of people. Okay. I'm not asking for that. Okay. I'm asking for total numbers. This committee would like okay. to make an assessment. I, I will do the as best to what, as to what the strength of the militias okay. strengths are. I will provide everything that I possibly can to you that but would we're not, not violate we're not, personal privacy. We're not asking you for any individual names that you don't want to provide. We're not asking you for violations of any of any personal privacy. Okay, thank you, sir. Ms. Trockman, you had something you wanted to add? Yes, sir, I can add that uh, we will provide you with the numbers of the uh, people that we work with in leadership across the country, concerned citizens, and it will stagger your imagination, I guarantee you. America is upset, and we are a valve to help control them till we can find a way to solve this. Please be thankful that we are here. We love our country. We love our form of government. There is no better on earth. We're here to support the righteous government. I, I would like an answer from each of you, too, in writing, if you'd provide it. As a follow-up to Mr. Mr. Johnson said, that there's only time between now and armed conflict. Uh, you have all said that you respect the democratic process and the ballot box as a way of changing our institutions. And the only limitations when asked about violence was uh, essentially a statement about self-defense. Uh, to the extent that uh, you know of any others who disagree and do plan violence, uh, to the extent you would provide that to this committee, we would be interested uh, uh, to know that. Uh, th th this is the first hearing that we have on this subject, and uh, we will be pursuing the, the matter further. Do you have something more you want to say, Mr. Trockman? Sir, we are already doing that with federal agencies. That's correct, yes. We have yes. provided... Mm -hmm. well, all right, you provide them, provide them to federal agencies is fine. If you provide them to this subcommittee, we are interested to know, too, uh, because we're trying to make an assessment of the extent of the militias, uh, how many people, not necessarily specific identity, what their firepower is, what their purposes are, and whether they pose any threat, and whether there's any justification for uh, further legislation on the subject, either at the state, local, or uh, at the federal level. But this is uh, the first hearing. This is the fourth hearing uh, which this subcommittee has held on problems of terrorism uh, uh, generally. Can I make one real brief statement? Uh, given the make very it, brief. Make it, make it real. Okay. Uh, I can assure you, sir, and to all members of Congress and to all the people of this nation, that the militia does not constitute any threat to this nation. Well, we have that assurance, uh, Mr. Adams, but you'll forgive us if we don't want to accept it uh, at face value. We want to we want to look further. Uh, Mr. Inspector, if, uh, if please, I wonder if we may be able to ha have an insurance that we would have an open door to get to uh, you folks relative to the same fear that we have relative to a government that maybe the uh, people are no longer trusting. You have an open door to this subcommittee. Any additional information you wish to provide to us, we would be, uh, we would be glad to have. Thank you, sir. L let me make one, one brief comment about a, a press advisory which I have just seen from uh, Congressman Schumer uh, commenting about uh, uh, these hearings. Uh, uh, there will be follow-up, and we'd be glad to have any suggestions that uh, Mr. Schumer, Congressman Schumer, might have. And to uh, note that uh, uh, we had uh, testimony from uh, Rabbi Heyer, the dean and founder of the Simon Wiesenthal Center, earlier in our hearings on, uh, uh, on uh, uh, terrorism. 
uh, and a concluding statement that uh, 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 at least my own view is that a public airing of uh, uh, grievances that the citizens have is a very useful and very healthy thing. There is in the Constitution beyond uh, the more frequently quoted freedom of speech, religion, and press, uh, uh, the right of the citizenry to petition uh, uh, the Congress. And uh, we are interested in what you, uh, what you have to say. Uh, uh, much of it you've already heard is uh, there's disagreement with the panel, and I would express that same disagreement. And uh, my own view is whatever ideas you have, uh, uh, let's get them out in the open. And uh, I believe that, uh, if I may say just one or two words in a conclusory fashion, that much of what has been said here today will fall of its own weight. Uh, but let's hear about it. And I think if, uh, if we hear you out, uh, we may decrease your membership. Uh, but it's a free society. We all have a right to speak and let uh, the American people uh, draw their conclusions. And my own sense is that it is healthy and America will applaud uh, letting you speak your piece, no matter how much we disagree with you. Thank you all very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The Senate passed the anti-terrorism bill last week, 91 to 8. The House will take up the anti-terrorism bill in July.